Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jim Lopes, and I was a friend of Judge Layton's, and it is my honor to welcome you all here for his birthday celebration. It's a celebration of a remarkable life of a man who grew up right here in New Bedford. Um, well, he was born here, October 22nd, 1912. Imagine that, New Bedford, Howland Street, going from here to the river. The whaling industry is still here. Whaling ships sailing out of here. Judge Layton's family sending packet ships to, to Cape Verde back and forth. And on October 12th, October 22nd, 19, 1912, he was born. We're going to open our program today with um, the color guard from the Verdian Vets. They will come and post colors. No flags? No colors? No color guard? We'll, we will welcome Erwin Russell to give us a, a, a salute here. Judge Layton was a proud veteran. Okay, we don't have colors to salute, but we should say the Pledge of Allegiance. You and uh, and Tootsie, sorry Tootsie, Irwin will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We, will, we have a flag. You have a All flag. All right. All stand. All rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Okay. Can I say something about his military career? Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. I'm Irvin L. Tootsie Russell. I'm presently the chaplain of the Dudley L. Brown VFW Post 2846 in Onset. I'm also a member of the Verdian Veterans, American Veterans Association here in New Bedford. And uh, I, as an associate of Judge Layton, uh, an aide, I could call myself, am very familiar with the judge's uh, veterans contribution, his patriotic contribution. He served in World War II. He served in the Pacific Theater. The judge was activated during his time in Howard University, excuse me, in Harvard University. Harvard Law School, he had been in attendance and they activated him to go to, uh, to World War II. The judge's education was very much interrupted for almost four years while he served in the Pacific Theater, performing many a many a task and at one point he was recognized in a book that's published for his advocacy toward uh, uh, black veterans who had been officers who had been had been discriminated against in the fact that they raised money to uh, to build a, a officers club and uh, they sought out the judge to to be advising them and they it's in a book that and I don't have the title at the present, but you can see it in the judge's bio. Uh, but the judge was a patriotic person. He is very proud of his veteran services. And uh, he is a person that uh, we're all going to have to look up to for the rest of our lives in, in a perfect icon that we should look forward to seeing. As a veteran, I salute him and uh, I'm looking forward to his internment into the Arlington National Cemetery as a dignified World War II honorable veteran. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm not sure everybody knew that, but on November 5th, uh, Judge Layton will be buried with full military, military honors in Arlington National Cemetery. I'd now, I'd now like to present to you Candida Rose to sing the national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at 
The twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watch Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the Thank you. It is now my uh, privilege to introduce to you the host of this event, the sponsor of this event, the man who pulled it all together today, the Honorable Jonathan Mitchell, Mayor of New Bedford. All right, well, good afternoon, everybody. Time to uh, break out the, the autumn line of clothing. It's that, uh, that cold. And uh, welcome, most of all, to, um, uh, to the students uh, here from the Gomes School. Um, uh, you, you are why we are doing this when you get right down to it. Um, so uh, I, I just want to offer up some, some thanks uh, for starters. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, Jim Lopes. Uh, his sister, Anne Marie Lopes, behind the camera for the two of them. Uh, for over the years of promoting uh, the legacy of, of this great man, George Layton, and uh, what he meant to New Bedford, uh, what New Bedford meant to him and his contributions to America uh, over his uh, fascinating uh, and unique career. Um, and I want to thank uh, Tootsie Russell, of course. Uh, Tootsie was, uh, in, in some respects, the uh, the judges, uh, the last executive officer in a way, the man who, in, in the judges' uh, final decade or so, uh, made uh, gave, gave the, the judge not only a, uh, a, a chess partner, although nobody really could compete with him uh, effectively, but uh, really allowed the judge to, to continue his work and, and to, uh, to be uh, engaged right, right up to the end of his uh, very, very long life. Um, you know, we are gathered here today to uh, dedicate this, uh, this tree, and there will be a memorial plaque as a fitting tribute to someone who was born 106 years ago on this spot in a house that once existed right here on this very day. Um, and as Jim alluded to, New Bedford was a very, very different place back then. Um, you know, whaling was still going on. This was a booming textile uh, center. Uh, it was a city of immigrants that was burgeoning uh, with a population larger than it is today that was essentially compressed from Hazelwood Park to uh, Brooklawn Park. Uh, and it was a place where uh, immigrant families like the judges uh, made a go of it uh, here in the United States. Um, and he certainly did, but it certainly, it, his certainly wasn't an advantageous start. Um, you know, the judge uh, was, uh, was born to a large Cape Verdean family. His parents came over, uh, I think from Brava, right? I think that's where they, they hailed from. And uh, like a lot of others in the neighborhood. Uh, and like a lot of others in the neighborhood, the family had connections to a lot of the traditional industries that um, the Cape Verdean community worked in. The, on, on the waterfront, uh, in cranberry bogs, um, and merchant shipping. And, uh, and that's, that's, uh, that's the place where he grew up. And I think that some of this uh, history is now uh, legend, but some of it requires uh, retelling just to set the context because 
it, it was a remarkable life. Um, he spoke up speaking Creole, and his, his first name, last name was was Lado, or I'm probably not doing it justice. Somebody help me. All right, Lado, right? And he went to what the former Cushnet Avenue School, which was right down the street, and he had a teacher who couldn't pronounce his name the right way, so she changed it for her own convenience to Layton, and that's how that stuck, which is uh, remarkable given the man's stature over his career. But so it was Americanized, and, uh, but he didn't, st he didn't stay long in school. Uh, during the school year, he, there were times when he didn't finish the, the entire year because he had to go work uh, on behalf of the family to raise, uh, to be a breadwinner, even at a very young age, uh, in Cranberry Bogs down the, the, down the Cape. Uh, and then later on, is, uh, he, and he missed years of schooling and so fell behind. And by the time he was in eighth grade, he was already 17 years old. And his mother came to him one day and said, we need you to make more money for us. And, I, and then we have, a, we have an opportunity for you uh, on a merchant ship, uh, but you got to go to Fall River and take, uh, take a boat to the right place. And it's, you're going to be in, a, in the, uh, the boiler room of a, a merchant vessel in, um, uh, in the Caribbean. Now, this is the 19... Late, this is the, this is the early, uh, late 1920s, uh, early 30s, a long time ago. And that's what he did for a number of years. But, you know, this was somebody who um, yearned to be educated. He understood that uh, the way ahead in this world, and particularly here in America, was that you had to, it was left up to you to improve yourself. And as much as getting an education is something that we offer, a free public education in America, uh, that's only that's only part of the equation that in order however much educational opportunity you had and back then there was far less and certainly for him uh, it's incumbent upon oneself to, to make it happen and so he left that day uh, to go to Fall River having checked out a book or two from the new from the New Bedford Public Library a place where he spent a lot of time and just consumed books in the bowels of that ship and improved his skills improved his writing improved his knowledge improved his his skills and uh, a few years later, he'd heard as he'd come, come back and forth to New Bedford over, over time, he, he understood that Howard University was admitting young African Americans who had missed portions of their school, but they had to write an essay to get in. And uh, it's a real tribute to uh, the folks at Howard back then that they would cut such a dispensation for this individual who never left the eighth grade. Uh, but he wrote a tremendous essay being the brilliant and learned man that he was and someone who had improved himself and he got in and he didn't just get in he went there to Howard University in the, in the 1930s in the late 30s as a 20 something uh, and he uh, he ended up graduating magna cum laude which for those which uh, in the Latin means really good means you're really smart um, so, so there he was, and then he, uh, he, he understood right around uh, 1940, before the war broke out, uh, that uh, you know, there may be opportunities to be, it may be an opportunity to become a lawyer. And he knew somebody, who, a name that every school child here is familiar with, a man named Alfred Gomes, who was one of the first Cape Verdean attorneys uh, in the city, who, uh, was, uh, who encouraged him and said, hey, you know, you've, 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 got, you've got what it takes, not just the brains, but the grit, the ambition, the, the, the determination. So he applied to Harvard Law School, uh, and he got in, and he started his studies. And uh, a little bit into his second year, um, Pearl Harbor was attacked, and he enlisted in the United States Army. Now, at that time, the United States Army was, was, uh, was still segregated, uh, unfortunately, it's the part of uh, the, the Second World War story that, uh, that is all too often de-emphasized. Uh, but he was one, in one of, the, one of the few, he ended up being in one of the few uh, African-American infantry units uh, in the United States Army, which is saying something. It's the, the, the Army recognized his leadership ability, and he became an infantry officer and served and fought in the Pacific and, and received the Bronze Star. Uh, which is uh, a big, you know, just a foot for most people. Anybody who would receive the Bronze Star would rightfully be, that would be the signature moment of their lives. For him, it's, it's in some ways just a footnote, but it is a marker of not only his courage, but the kind of person that, that he was. He gave it this, for all the work that he put in to get himself educated, uh, the judge still said, I'm going to serve. He raised his hand when his country needed him, and he served ably and, and with distinction. And at the end of the war, he went back to Harvard. He studied there and did really well. 
And he came back to New Bedford. Now, this is the tragic point. It's not the tragic point. This is the disappointing part of the story. He didn't stay in New Bedford. We wish he stayed here. Who knows, right? Uh, but he, he, um, he understood that, uh, and by then he had had a wife and, and children, uh, and he, underst he understood, uh, and they were still back down in Washington. Uh, but he understood that, you know, Chicago was a hotbed for uh, the civil rights movement and that he wanted, that was something that he wanted to be part of. So he went to Chicago and joined in with a, a law firm that was associated with the only uh, African-American member of Congress uh, at the time, a man named Dawson, uh, who got him connected up with a number of influential people uh, in Chicago. And from there, from there uh, came a career that was just really astonishing. Uh, he represented folks um, from uh, who, who were in need, Most, mostly African Americans who weren't getting their fair shake in Chicago, but he ended up going nationally in the sense that he joined on with Thurgood Marshall and a number of the, the, the leaders in the civil rights movement and brought cases and used his legal skills that he had honed over the years, over a very, actually a very short period of time, um, to a point where, you know, in the 1950s, remarkably, he was arguing cases before the United States Supreme Court. Now think about that, right? So here you have, here's a guy who, you know, had years earlier, in, in his adulthood, was, was peeling potatoes in the, in the bowels of a merchant ship. And some, you know, some uh, later on in his adulthood, he's standing before the United States Supreme Court arguing seminal cases on the, the rights of individuals, especially in criminal procedure. I remember having a conversation about him. I know our judges, uh, Fernandes and McDonald, uh, will appreciate this. Uh, I, I remember when I was at the U.S. Attorney's Office, there was, uh, uh, there was a case that was brought up in the course of a trial called Napui. And the Napui case was argued in the 50s, and it had to do with the obligations of a prosecutor to say, to, to tell the judge and to tell the jury and tell everybody when an individual, when a, excuse me, when a witness uh, may have been lying. This was, as the judges will know, this was before Brady versus Maryland and all, all those cases in the 60s. And uh, I remember arguing about this case. I looked down at, at the, uh, the litigants, it was George Layton, who argued it successfully on behalf of, uh, of the defendant. Uh, in that case, or the petitioner in that case, he broke ground. I mean, it's a hugely influential uh, decision that broke ground uh, in criminal procedure and affects, uh, affects the way that people do uh, try cases both at the federal and state level and has since then, but it's also elevated the rights of, uh, of the accused in ways that didn't exist before. That's George Layton, and I remember just talking to him about it, and he just said, oh yeah, Napui, that guy, well, he was, yeah, he was, I remember him back in Chicago, and I knew his mother, and that, that, you know, like very, it, for him, it was all ultimately about the people. Um, and, then, and then, of course, he had his career on the bench. First, uh, as a state court judge, and Illinois is one of those states where the judges are elected, it helped that he was friendly with uh, the mayor of Chicago, Richard Daley, at the, at the time to help him get in, and then uh, elevated to the uh, uh, appellate court, state appellate court, and then ultimately he ended up on the federal bench. Um, and where he served with great distinction, appointed by, though he was a Democrat, he was appointed by Gerald Ford, a Republican president. Um, and, and there he, he really set the standard for the federal judiciary and, and um, was a real credit uh, to the federal bench. Um, and so, you know, his was a life uh, in so many ways about elevating people, about giving others a shot, uh, about, about treating people fairly and about doing, and he did it at the most personal level, here in New Bedford, there in Chicago, in Washington, uh, in the South Pacific, everywhere. And that's what his life was about. And you know, if you you should take, if you haven't, you can go on the city website and take a look at uh, the documentary that Anne Marie uh, produced so skillfully a few years ago, uh, which is essentially his own testimony, and and what animated him. And the thing that's really it's always struck me is, um, you know, it is a guy who hadn't been dealt um, the best of hands, but who was just so determined, so absolutely determined to improve himself, and who understood that, and I would say this to every school child in, in this city and elsewhere, that his education belonged to him, that he owned it, and it was his opportunity to make the most of and 
And that's what he did. He was a voracious reader. He read the, the Bible several times, cover to cover. He developed himself as a, as a chess champion. I mean, he was, he, don't get me wrong. He was an extremely talented and an extremely intelligent individual in his own right. But, every, but everybody has their talents and not everybody activates them. What stands out about George Layton is, that, is the extent to which he said, I'm going to make the most of myself in this world. And from those humblest beginnings, it's just a, a story that we can't tell. Uh, we can't tell enough. In many ways, and I said this the other night, at, um, for those of you who are at the Cape Verdean Association uh, Gala, in many ways, I would, I would, call, I would call George Layton the, the Cape Verdean Lincoln. Here's somebody with very, very little formal education. Thanks, thank you, Tootsie. Um, very, very, very little formal education who turned himself into something remarkable and advanced the rights of others, especially people of color. And so we pay tribute to him so proudly as a son of New Bedford um, here today. And, uh, and I hope that uh, school children in years ahead will look at this and draw inspiration from this marker as, as I do. And um, so I just, uh, this really is just to, close my remarks and then I'll introduce the other speakers but uh, you know this this guys is for you this is a man who made the most of what he what he had and what he would hope for you in, in service to his country and to the defendants that he represented in, in court and for the folks that he had before him as a judge what he would say is make the most of it make the most of it guys um, all right well thank you for hearing me out on those that story So we have, um, um, we have a, a, a short speaking program just to, to wrap up in the next few minutes. I did want to uh, recognize uh, Judges Fernandes and, and McDonald for, for being here today. Uh, City Councilor Scott uh, Lima is, is here as well. Our Police Chief Joe Cadero, uh, Manny Silva from DPI, which did such a skillful uh, job in planting this tree as somebody who spends a lot of time uh, with uh, with trees and planting them in the city this is a big one this is a four inch caliber tree kids not a three inch one like you <laughs> see on the street so we did a we supersized it for the judge um, Mary Raposer our director of parks and uh, and recreation we appreciate uh, the work that, that that she did today Donald Gomes formerly from the from the ZBA and many other things Donald Donald doesn't want the attention I'm going to give it to him anyway uh, our good friend Bill Carmo, and we have uh, Manuel Montero, of course, from formerly from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Alan Gallant, the principal of uh, the Gome School. Tricia Andrade from the Health Department. Lots of folks. Way too many to name. And then the folks who are going to be speaking um, uh, in a moment. So um, we're, we appreciate today uh, the presence of, of Congressman Bill Keating. Uh, it's uh, entirely appropriate as we. Uh, recognize somebody who served uh, the nation uh, both as a soldier and as a jurist that uh, that we have uh, the congressman here today and, and the congressman has been a big supporter of what we're trying to do here in the city uh, but especially in recognizing those who've uh, who's given back in big ways to our country and so Bill thank you for being here today I'd ask you to come on up and say a few words Thank you, Mayor, and, uh, and the Mayor did a remarkable job uh, going through uh, just some of the highlights of Judge, Le Judge Layton's life. I hear, I'm here representing the United States of America, and, and as such, just want to highlight uh, just three of those areas of his life in particular, uh, and that's the, his work when he was at Howard with the U.S. Army Reserve's uh, training corps as a second lieutenant early on in his life, uh, showing his devotion to country, and then Going on in World War II, George served the, in the Pacific Theater for almost three years and is awarded the uh, Asiatic Pacific Service Medal, Bronze Star. And he was discharged as a captain in 1945. And also uh, his work uh, for his country as a whole, serving in the U.S. District Court of Northern District of Illinois in uh, 1976 uh, until retiring in 87 at the age of 75. An extraordinary contribution to the United States of America. This will be all part of what I put in as a permanent record uh, for his life that will be a permanent record of Congress celebrating this. Uh, just looking at where we are today and, and looking at our surroundings, uh, I can't help but think there's a, uh, there's a triangle here 
uh, that's a lesson to all of us. Part of the triangle is where the judge's home was, over there. Now, if you look at the second triangle and look at the Alfred Gomes School, you'll understand the importance of education and how that gives everyone a fighting chance in life and how he's an, an extraordinary example of how he fought for that education, educated himself so much, but had the ability uh, to, to take that forward. So you have the strength of community where his home was, where that's such a big part of someone's life. You have the idea that opportunity represented in there, and ironically, uh, named after Alfred Gomes, who stood there and tried to get that first scholarship for him and was successful to Howard. So how, how, how impressive is that, that that's named after him? And then this tree that we commemorate today that shows growth and the future. And the roots you see are already planted uh, in this tree. I'm reminded of a story uh, that's been told uh, of a French general. And in the course of a war, their national forest was deliberately burned down to the ground in that war. And the general took his troops and said, I want you to go now and plant seeds all through the forest. And his military people came to him and said, well, general, that will take 100 years for those trees to grow. Then he said, then we should start this afternoon. <laughs> when I look at that tree, and I look at the lessons of Judge Layton's life, and how important they are today, as important today as they were through his life now. The tree that represents the meaning of what his life and the purpose of his life, that tree will be an inspiration to all of us. And for these young students here at the Gomes School, this will be something to look at each day and remember the necessity of us all being responsible to grow our society the way Judge Layton has done for this community, what he's done for this great country, what he's done in the course of civil rights and standing up for other people's rights. And the lesson will carry forth today. And what, did it, what a, uh, an appropriate, appropriate symbol. Because that growth does not die when he did. And that growth continues today and will inspire generations to come. Thank you. Right. I'd like to, uh, if I could, his family is here. I know his niece is here and uh, his cousin is here. I'd like to present this to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. Thanks, John. All right, so. Um, a couple of other people that I, I wanted to uh, to recognize: uh, Rita Ribeiro from the Folk School Committee, who's uh, just a huge supporter of all of education generally in the city. Great to see you here, Rita. Um, I did want to mention uh, Christian Gonzalez, who was involved in the in the um, in the planning of this event, and and um, and and will be there at Arlington next month. Uh, Christian is a relation of, of George uh, Layden and has and has uh, helped so much to carry on the judge's uh, legacy. So we really appreciate your being here, you and your your family. Um, I wanted to um, to call up our state senator, a big supporter of the Gomes School and of uh, Judge Layton's legacy, including at the naming of the post office um, some ten years ago or so. Actually, a little bit more than that. Uh, Mark Montigny. Mark. I lend him my coat. He and I have jogged a couple of times together. He kept it up, I didn't. So I wouldn't want this to hang off of you on cable TV. <laughs> what, a, what a great day. I looked at my schedule this morning and I had something I needed to do with my mom and I had a choice of the wind energy announcement, which is huge, uh, or this event. And I thought of the day I met uh, Judge Letao at the post office, uh, Mayor. And I thought about uh, his great wisdom uh, a man of, uh, with a dose of humility and few words. Um, and then I thought about um, my charge here at the podium and how most politicians have limited wisdom 
no dose of humility, and unlimited words. But I'm going to spare you because the niece and nephew of uh, this incredible man are, are, are in our presence. And I hope you'll pass on to the rest of your family members just how we feel about the judge. Uh, he's been recognized all over the country um, as uh, the incredible man he is, but perhaps there is uh, no more important way than to recognize a man or a woman in their own home as the, as, you know, as the saying says, a, a prophet is not uh, recognized in their own home. This man is recognized uh, in his own home. Uh, I didn't know until this morning when Tootsie Russell said that Judge Leitao's home was here uh, at the Gome School, and I thought about all these wonderful children. One quick Gome School story, because I, I think I actually have the bona fides to say it's my favorite school. I'll get in trouble when I go to the other schools as I do. But I ran into a couple of the kids at uh, one day, and they said, and they recognized me because I had my suit and tie on, and they kind of gave me the cheer, and I said, do you love me because I helped build that playground for you? And the kid says, no, we love you because you said we could yell and scream all we want even when the teacher said we couldn't. <laughs> it's a true story, the, the principal will tell you. But it's relevant today because I just think about, um, you know, in life there is the only sport or game or challenge that I know of that has a handicap is golf. And although it's a more diverse uh, game or sport, depending on your opinion, than it used to be. Ultimately, when you really think about it, golf historically was um, a, a rich white man's sport, and yet somehow they worked in this handicap that said, if you weren't quite as good, we'll do something to level the playing field. And I was thinking about, if we applied that to the lifetime of struggle, um, Judge Layton would have been on the Supreme Court in his 20s. <laughs> Um, think about it. Just think about how we measure success and the way we judge both success and failure. And a guy comes up the hard way, and he's not the only example, although he's a stunning uh, example. And we expect, and we many times, um, particularly when we write history, think about how people break through those ceilings. But unfortunately, many times it's used to imply that everyone ought to be able to do that. Everyone isn't extraordinary. Everyone is unique, but everyone isn't extraordinary. And we shouldn't have standards that make it so difficult. Of course, we've made tremendous progress since 106 years ago when the judge was born. But ultimately, with tremendous struggle, he achieved uh, extraordinary, uh, extraordinary achievements. Um, we should look to that as, as the, uh, the norm, not the exception. Um, when I think of this city, there's some great men and women, some here, um, some who have passed, but I think of the civil rights battles. Jabril Kazan is still with us, uh, and although Judge Layton has passed, these are men, and there are women uh, like Eloise Piner, and there are people like Bill DeCamo still with us, and Manny Coster, and I, I, I shouldn't name because there are some here, and others related to those that have gone before, but I don't think we spend enough time uh, recognizing greatness, um, even at the local level. And I, I greatly appreciate the mayor, not only for taking the time, but for showing the respect to do the homework on the judge's life, um, because every single student here from the Golem School should know that history. Every student should know the history of Jabril Kazan. Every student should know the history of Frederick Douglass. Uh, and yet we don't. And I certainly didn't until I went out and sought that. It wasn't my formal education that made me realize the greatness of this city because of the greatness of some of the men uh, and women um, that came before. So I want to close, um, frankly, because I think the mayor covered his life so well that even if I went out and studied it and, and took uh, 15 minutes to regurgitate it, it would do no justice because many of you here in the audience knew the judge personally. I'm honored that I met him, but I can't say that I knew him as well as I wish uh, I did, but I can say this, his legacy will, I hope, live on long after this tree uh, is in full maturity. So I appreciate it. I don't think there's any more appropriate place. Even before I understood that that home that he was born into was on this site, I think the Gome School represents everything that Judge Layton found to be uh, cherished. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's funny. It, it, so there are lots, I mean, those of you who 
are familiar with the judge's bio um, know that I, I left out a lot of parts and, and I think it again I would encourage anybody to everybody to take a look at Anne Marie's um, video which is available on the city website but um, you know it is um, it is appropriate that we give the, the judge rock star status and uh, you know he was uh, as Jim would tell you on the short list to be uh, the first African-American appointed to the Supreme Court, first or second, and uh, after Thurgood Marshall, and, uh, and it made all the sense in, in, the, in the world. There's lots of what-ifs with, with such things, but the fact that he was in that conversation spoke volumes about what he had accomplished. Um, you know, I, I do have one very, very brief story, that, and I'll pick on somebody here. Uh, so for my uh, second inauguration as mayor at the Zyterian Theater, uh, Judge Fernandes emceed, and uh, as he has for every single one of mine, um, and uh, I had to pick somebody to administer um, the uh, the oath of office, and so I, I called Tootsie and I said, "Hey, uh, do you think we could get the judge to, to do it?" <laughs> so he was only 103 years young at that moment, and uh, and I said, "So he and he he got up and he he said absolutely." So he got there, you know. Shirt and tie on, look, looking sharp as a as a pin, and um, you know, of course, everybody knew who he was uh, at that event. And you know, my MC, uh, Judge Fernandes, couldn't help himself. He had to talk about Judge far more than the mayor that evening. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm the one getting sworn in here. Come on, what about me? Uh, but it just, it, and I think I, I think I said that night. Look, if there's anybody who's going to overshadow me in my own inauguration, it's Judge Layton. So I was. I was, I was fine with that. That was entirely appropriate. So uh, a big part of his story is his connection to, the, to uh, the Cape Verde Islands where his parents had come from. And I remember the judge uh, describing his parents as sterling people, using that, that term, just people who were salt of the earth, who were determined to bring their kids up the right way and to imbue them with the right values. And so it's entirely uh, appropriate that, that we have someone from representing the uh, the Cape Verdean uh, government here because the, the Cape Verde Islands are extremely proud of what uh, the judge uh, accomplished over the course of his career. And so today is our good, uh, with us today is our good friend uh, Herminio Moniz, uh, Consul General, to say a few words on behalf of, uh, of his government. Come on up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Mitchell, for inviting me to this ceremony. All protocol observed, it is a great honor for me, in my capacity as a Council General of Cabo Verde, to participate in this highly symbolic ceremony. The planting of this, trib this tree in tribute of Judge George Layton officially recognized this city where he was born and commemorates his legacy as a jurist. Cabo Verde and the city of New Bedford have come together on this day, which coincides with the anniversary of Leighton's birth to pay tribute as a sim symbol of eternal gratitude. To the family of the deceased, our deepest sympathies. The Judge Leighton, the Judge George Leighton personifies through his life, the determination to pursue a dream. From a humble family, he worked on cranberry box, and as a self-educated student, he continued on the university and then to a career as a judge. Cabo Verde will also pay tribute to Judge Layton by planting a tree at the School of Brave. This tree will remind us that in his lifetime, Judge Layton earned the state of Cabo Verde highest honors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. Okay. All right. The um, last person um, uh, to come up to speak is somebody who is a great admirer of, of the judge, but who you know, appropriately can speak to um, 
to education in our city, and that is my colleague on the school committee, Jack Livermento. Jack. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Mitchell. Just, uh, I guess, a little correction is we've expanded Gomes School. It is no longer just Gomes School, it's the Gomes School and the Renaissance School. So we have some Renaissance School students here this afternoon also. The word that came to mind when I first really thought about saying anything about Judge Layton is persistence. But first I want to backtrack a little in terms of how we as Cape Verdeans get to the United States. We come from us of, of Cape Verdean heritage come from a heritage of a number of islands off of the coast, off of the west coast of Africa. And from that small number of islands, a number of us have come to the United States, have gone to Europe, and have gone to other parts of the world and expanded what we as Cape Verdeans can do and contribute. We have come a long way and judge George Layton really goes through the process of exemplifying exactly what Cape Verdeans have done throughout this world. He is a person who has been persistent, and I'll use that word a number of times. He's persistent, and I, I, I want to say mainly in terms of education, because he thought that he could obtain that education that would assist him in getting into whatever field and whatever area he wanted to go. I asked the students this morning, or this afternoon, to do the same thing. Be persistent in whatever you would like to obtain, whether it's in education or in any other field you choose to go in. Just be persistent and continue to do that. As he grew here, I think it's the support of families. His family that he supported himself and his family that the community in which we live supported him, that allowed him to really go on to achieve all of the, the goals that he wanted to achieve. It was the really the support that we and I see that I obtain from the community around here that assist me in doing anything that I would like to try and accomplish. I don't accomplish it by myself. I accomplish it with the assistance and the work of all of you. It is not an individual performance or an individual achievement. It's an achievement of the community. And that's the road I think Judge Layton walked down. He didn't walk down the, the road of individuality. It's the road of community, support, and really the surrounding people that assist us in getting to whatever goal we would like to achieve. He was persistent throughout his entire life. I honor him this afternoon because of that persistence, because of all of the things that he dedicated and really worked to achieve in his life. Hopefully, we as individuals and I as myself can try and work and achieve some measure, a little measure of what he worked toward. Hopefully, we can walk toward being a part of that continued goal of becoming totally all we can be. So again, thank you for the family, for being here. Thank you for the community. Thank you for each and every one of you who have gone through the process of looking at his life and use it as an example where we can all grow toward and become better as citizens here in the city of New Bedford and in the nation of the United States of America. Thank you. Hold on, Jeff. Thank you. Let's jump. Let's jump. All right. Um, I just want to add, by the way, I am, um, I, I've, I've, I'm, I'm fed, fed up uh, with having to f me immediately follow Candida Rose when she performs. It's just, uh, again, it's kind of like Judge Fernandes. I'm getting diminished all the time, you know. <laughs> Candida, thank you for, uh, for being you. Um, the students here have been, uh, yes. Let's so the students, you guys, you guys have been fabulous. You've been fabulous in listening in on this and really, really appreciate it. Um, we understand that you uh, have a tribute to, uh, to Judge Layton that you were about to perform today. Is that right or no? <laughs> Jim? Yes. Tell, tell us, Jim. 
Thank you, sir. You can sit down now. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, really? It yes. I was wondering when I got my program back. Have a seat, sir. All right, all right. Okay, all right. thank you. No, no, no. All right. You guys ready? You want to sing from back there? Let him sing back there, John. Okay. So today is his 106th birthday. Wow. 106 years. Okay, you ready? All set? I, presenting, presenting the singers from the Renaissance School and from the Gome School. You have to sing it 106 times. Come on, time number to sing it again, 106 times. Well, thank you, thank you very much. I'd now like to, uh, well, first before we do this, I wanted to give you three fun facts that you can't find in Google. Fun facts about Judge Layton. He's born over here at Nine Holland Street, but he was a twin. Yes, he was a twin. And the midwife named these kids after their grandparents. So he was named Teofilo. Teofilo das Nevis, das Nevis laid down. And his sister was Livramenta. Okay, Livramenta laid down. When they were baptized at Our Lady of Assumption Church, which was right over there, the first Cape Verdean Catholic Church in America, right over there, they, their names were changed to George and Georgina. And today, the family members who joined us are the descendants of Georgina Leitdown, otherwise known as Livramento Leitdown. The other fun fact, I have three fun facts, because I had 10 until... <laughs> <laughs> My second fun fact is that George Neves Leitdown, who was born here in New Bedford, went on to mentor a whole lot of people. And two of those people that he mentored were Deval Patrick, governor of Massachusetts, and one of his biggest admirers, Barack Obama, president of the United States. He was a student of Judge Layton's, he was a friend of Judge Layton's, and Judge Layton mentored him. And on the program, if you look at the program, there's a quote from President Obama. The Reverend Martin Luther King once said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Reverend King was right, but it does not bend in its own. It takes people like George Layton to bend it. President Barack Obama. Okay, saluting somebody from New Bedford. Now the last fun fact, and then we will get out of the cold. The last fun fact is that I mentioned Howland Street, and he was born here at the end of this block on a Cushion Avenue. That's where he got his scholarship. Remember, you're in the fifth grade, right? Third and fifth. He got out of school when he was in the seventh grade, but he went on to become a federal judge. Plus, they didn't speak English at home. Correct me, il papi, papiada criollo na casa? They spoke Creole at home. Okay, that's all the Creole I know. <laughs> and he got his award up the street, okay? And the building up the street was owned by, was built and owned by Bishop Daddy Grace. Now when uh, uh, George Layton went down to Washington to go to college, his mother told him to look up one of her cousins in Washington, that maybe her cousin could help him out. So he went to this house in Washington, knocked on the door, the butler opened the door, and George Layton went in to meet his friend, and there was Bishop Grace. And George Layton, the young student, sat down with Bishop Grace, told him he wanted to go to college, and sweet daddy Grace helped to fund George Layton's first year of college. Okay, so we've heard about Alfred Alfred Gomes, paying it forward, helping uh, Judge Layton, and we've heard about uh, Bishop Grace, paying it forward, helping Judge Layton. We've heard a lot about Judge Layton constantly paying it forward. So today, we want to inspire all of you. You walk in the footsteps of giants. There are people who came from here who became great people, and now it's your turn, okay? So a lot of people we have to thank today. Um, but first of all, we're going to dedicate our tree. 
I invite the mayor up again and the members of the Layton family, Christian Gonzalez, that's his great nephew, and Faith Miranda, his niece. If you can come up, this is a tulip tree. It'll bloom flowers in the spring and have yellow, yellow uh, leaves in the, in the fall. It's a beautiful tree. And um, how do you want to do this? We have no shovel. So we're going to invite, we're going to invite the kids from the school up and then what they're going to do to dedicate this tree is they're all going to put flags around our tulip tree. And also, one very last thing, I don't know if all of you caught this, we are planting this tree in New Bedford, but the government of Cape Verde is planting a tree in Judge Layton's memory in Cape Verde. And they would like to encourage all of you, if you have ancestors from the Cape Verde Islands, in memory of your ancestors, you may want to plant a tree in Cape Verde too. So, okay. Uh, welcome the kids up from the um, Gome School and Renaissance School. Come plant your, uh, come plant your flags. All around, just put them all around here. Thank you. While they're, while they're planting their flags, let me thank a few people who brought this program together. First of all, I'd like to thank the family of Judge Layton. I'd like to thank the City of New Bedford, the office of John Mitchell Mayor, New Bedford Cable Network for covering this event and sharing it with the, uh, all the people of New Bedford, the Consul General of the Republic of Cape Verde, Cabo Verde, Congressman Bill Keating, elected city officials, the New Bedford Public Library, Olivia Mello Director, Janice Hodgson, Dale Easton, uh, for those of you who live in New Bedford, what we're doing is we have a memory book of condolences that you can sign for the family of Judge Layton. That book is here today. If you come up to me, you can find it. It's where is it? Right here. Right here. Right here. It's right here. You can sign this book. This book will be given to the family at Arlington Cemetery, okay? Now, until October 31st, this book will be at the New Bedford Public Library, downtown branch. There's also a wonderful exhibit on Judge Layton there. I suggest stopping by to see the exhibit. But you can sign, if you have a wonderful memory of Judge Layton, uh, you can, you can uh, or if you just want to sign your name, that's fine. I want to thank the New Bedford School Department, the teachers and students of the Alfred J. Gomes School, and the Renaissance School, uh, the uh, Verde Vets Color Guard, and all of the many friends of Judge Layton, and our, our event committee, um, uh, Erwin Russell, Bill DeCarmo, Carl Cruz, Marcy Pina Christian, Christine Arsenal, and then Marlene Lopes and Anne-Marie Lopes, who all were very helpful in this. Now, next steps. This is not over. Last month, October 5th, there was a celebration of Judge Layton's life in, in Chicago, because there's a, a, a courthouse named after him in Chicago. Um, that was October 5th at the U.S. District Court. It was led by members of the Illinois Supreme Court, where all of the sitting justices of the Illinois Supreme Court were there to salute Judge Layton. Um, beginning tomorrow, we have the memory book. On cable access, we have Return of the Native, which is a documentary on the life of Judge Layton. You can access that on, uh, on YouTube and also the city. If you're interested in working towards other honors, uh, honoring Judge Layton, there's a committee forming. Just talk to Tootsie Russell or Bill Carmo. Uh, if, you, if you work for another organization, you'd like to see a chessboard here, a bench here, in honor of Judge Layton. There are lots of things we can do. We already have the, the, uh, we have the courtyard at Roosevelt Junior High School named after him. We have the post office. In your program, in the inside of the program, is a list of honors around the U.S., different buildings and honors Judge Layton has received. Okay? Finally, the judge will be honored with a, with a service with full military honors in Arlington National Cemetery on November 5th. Uh, the public is invited. Uh, so right now we ask, uh, we want to send good wishes to him and his family and just to thank everybody for coming today. Thank you. Oh.
two last, two last flags, the flag of Cape Verde and the flag of the United States. You can go ahead. In the middle. In the middle. Benediction. Okay. Yep, there it goes. All right. All right. And, uh, I invite Tootsie Russell back to the podium for the benediction. Okay, this has been a beautiful uh, program, and we want to definitely extend uh, sincere appreciations to all the people that were involved in putting this together and Faith D. Miranda for being the principal representative of the judge's family. And I'll now do a benediction. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that thou will dismiss us with thy blessing and grant that we may continue, continually experience the calmness and serenity of, of here and so which comes from the from thee make us useful servants of thine of thine in all things amen, amen. amen.